This remake definitely brings honor to the Mulan legacy. Let's get into it. What's going on guys, this is your boy Joshua, aka Future Filmmaker 3940 Reviews, where I talk movies, TV, and music, and if you guys like either one of those three, be sure to like, comment, and share this video, or share any other future videos if you like what you see here. Thank you guys for watching, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notified when I go live, when I post new uploads, or when I post my community tab, otherwise you're not going to get every single notification there. And also, if you want to send money to my time, or if you want to DM me to send fan mail, or do do send money to my time, you can you can DM me or email me privately, and you, I'll get back to you as well. With that being said, let's get into the review. So the review I'm going to be giving you guys is my brand new movie review for the newest live action Disney remake. Continuing the trend and that is for Mulan, which is directed by Nikki Caro, the director of Zookeeper's Wife. Stars Lu Yafei, Donnie Yen, Jason Scott Lee, Jung Sun An, Gong Li, and Jet Li returning to a, a movie. And this again, this is based on the original classic 1990 film, but this is mainly more focused on the original Chinese folklore. So with that being said, let's get into the plot of this movie. When the Emperor of China issues a decree that only one man per family must serve in the Imperial Army to defend the country from northern invaders, Hua Mulan, the eldest daughter of an honored warrior, steps in to take the place of her ailing father, masquerading as a man named Ha Jun. She is tested through every step of the way and must harness her inner strength and embrace her true potential while also fighting a, a witch and this will transform her into an honored warrior and earn the respect of a grateful nation. And that is what we got here except that there's no singing, there's no Mushu. And this is a completely original new, new interpretation with homages from the 1998 film but mainly more focus on the original Chinese folklore and taking other aspects from other Chinese movies but this still is pretty much its own thing and that is what I'm very happy about with this movie because this wasn't a shot for shot remake going into this new Mulan movie I was of course I was really excited I am pretty hit and miss with the live action Disney remakes. I hated Maleficent. I hated Maleficent Mistress of Evil. I I don't really care too much for The Lion King 2019 even though that movie is visually aesthetic. I, I am hit and miss with The Haunted Mansion. I like it and I don't like it. The, the Beauty and the Beast 2017 remake, I loved it when it came out but over time I think it's fine. But the other live action remakes I do enjoy. I like Peach Dragon. I used to hate the Cinderella remake, but I've grown to appreciate it. I love the Dumbo remake. I really like the Peach Dragon remake and the Jungle Book remakes from 2016. Actually, I was one of those people who was actually excited to see what they would do with Mulan. Because Mulan is definitely, it is a great story. And I love the 1998 Mulan. That is my 14th favorite movie of all time. It is my favorite Disney Renaissance movie. It's one of my favorite Disney an animated movies. And it's definitely one of my favorite Disney movies. Period. I love that movie. It has a great story. Mean the Wind's version of Mulan is really cool. Mushu was also a very fun character. The songs were very nice. And it had a great message and great themes to it. And th that movie was released back at the time where you could have female empowerment, where 
people will not have to whine and complain about everything with a woman in it because nowadays if you have a movie with a female lead either one or two things is going to happen one is going to get called out as SJW paranoia or man bashing or people's just going people's just going to quickly disown it and also because this was a re do its own thing and not be a shot for shot remake that actually got me very excited to see this as well and with the cast and with the direction and with the trailers i was very happy with but i know there was controversy over no the the fact that they were taking the songs out taking music out and they were going a more serious approach which is why this movie is pg-13 and also some controversy when it comes to the main actress but which i'm not going to get into because she's not a criminal um you guys you want to like i said you want to complain about her and brie larson Kevin marie train and daisy ridley and you want to send death threats to Laura Bailey, but you guys do none of that with Amber Heard. Again, I'm going to use the clip from my review. But you know who is guilty of criminal wrongdoing? This guy! But yes, I love the original new Mulan, and I'm actually one of the few people who actually enjoyed the 2004 sequel. It wasn't as amazing as the first one, but it, as a sequel to its predecessor, it stood on its own. And that's what it did. It stood on its own. This Mulan movie, I was really excited, of course, when it was supposed to come out in March. But then it got, kept getting pushed back due to this ongoing stupid pandemic. But they decided to put it on Disney+, Plus, which I would, for, for a, a crap load of money, for $29, which I, luckily I was able to find this movie free and watch it. And also, when it came to Disney Plus, I was curious, but I was also a little scared because because this might end up happening with Black Widow and Soul. But when I heard it was just gonna be a one-time thing, I was like, okay, let's see what it does. And plus, Disney Plus, they have been knocking it out of the park for me this year. Star Girl was great. Hamilton was great. Timmy Failure was really good. I really enjoyed Togo which I which I just recently watched. I really enjoy Phineas and Ferb Candace Against the Universe. I hated Artemis Fowl. I, that is the only Disney Plus movie I do not like. I hated Artemis Fowl, but after watching this yesterday, I'm safely going to say that this is one of the better live action Disney remakes. And this is definitely one of the, my favorite movies of the year. But also, this is going to be a pretty underrated film because critics are liking it, but most audiences are not. But if you are going into this movie expecting the shot, shot for shot remake, you're not gonna you're gonna be disappointed because this this ain't gonna be this ain't the, the cartoon. This is more the Chinese story. If you are going in with biased expectations, like if you're someone who really hates the Disney remakes, all of them, you ain't gonna like this one. But if you are going in with the lowest of expectations, or with pretty full of optimism, and see this as its own thing, I think you will actually really enjoy this. So, with that being said, I'm gonna say it. I loved Mulan 2020. Now, the original is still my favorite, but this, this, this becomes pretty close to being as great per perfection as the original. I, there is some, a few shortcomings, and I'll get into those. So, with that being said, let's get into my positives with this movie. Now, let's get into the positives of Mulan 2020. First off, I gotta say, Nikki Caro, good job. Great job. You had a impossible task that you had to pull off. Taking this $200 million budget and a great story like Mulan and making it your own thing. She had a very impossible job to do and she did a phenomenal job in the direction department. This movie is directed with a lot of love, is directed with a lot of heart. There is, there is, there's a lot of passion in, this, in the direction in the execution of this movie. 
you, it, of course, you do have your homages to the original, but it's not overly done as some live action remakes or some remakes. This actually goes out of its way to tell a completely different story while also honoring its source material. And that is the best thing I think a remake should do. If you're going to do a remake to a well-respected movie, honor your source material, but do something different. And Nikki Carl does a great job with that in the direction. And also, the script is, is very good. For the most part, there is a little bit of shortcoming in the script. But I do think Rick Jaffa, Amanda Silver, and the other two writers, they did a very great job at taking this story and making it different to be its own thing and I really enjoyed that I do like the relationship between Mulan and her father I do like the fact that they added some things here like they gave Mulan a sister they they add, they had alternatives for Li Shang which of course in the case of Commander Tusks and the, this other new character which I really like I really do like the main villain here you get a motivation from her her and the Emperor, you get motivations out of them, especially Gong Li. I do like th like that. And that's what I very much appreciate, that this wasn't a shot for shot movie. I appreciate the fact that they actually put effort into this. It really put a smile on my face the whole time watching this, because I was worried that this was going to be shot for shot. But when they actually take take influences from the other Chinese clap stories in terms of this action and this direction but also very much its its original counterpart and its original Chinese folklore I was very happy they actually did enough different here not to say that this movie is completely devoid of some references but is not overbearing as you would think as I thought it was going to be. And hands off, we got to talk about the cast because this cast is dedicated. It's all Asian cast. There's no whitewashing, which I was very happy with because I am kind of tired of most of these remakes and, and such just whitewashing class characters. They stay very true to the cast in this movie and all the cast does a great job, but the standout here is Lu Yafei. I do remember seeing her in The Forbidden Kingdom, which I thought was uh, okay. It wasn't awful, but I, lo I loved her portrayal of Mulan. She is a great counterpart to Mean the Wind. And also, speaking of, Mean the Wind, she does make a cameo somewhere in this movie, but I won't say where, but Lu Yafei, she is, she plays it, this character very well, she does her own action, she does her own fighting, she did, she got into shape for this role, and she really does great in the action scenes, as well as the emotional moments, and as well as bringing honor to the character, and oh, plus, Lu Yafei, very gorgeous. She's up there in one of the most gorgeous Asian women, right next to Jean Tian and Kara Fukuhawa and Maggie Q, and even Malia Lewis. So yeah, you have you have Lu Yafei. She does a great job, and you know what to do. Roll the roll the montage. But also the rest of the cast in this movie is really great too. Donnie Yen, I loved him in this movie. He was great. He was awesome. Donnie Yen is a great actor. He 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 didn't have the best character in Rogue One, but I thought he did a phenomenal job in that movie. And Donnie Yen, anytime you see Donnie Yen, it's always cool seeing him. He's a cool actor. Well, also Young Son An, I thought was really great as as the new character, for her, the character that that comes in contact with Mulan. He's not. He doesn't become the love interest, but it was okay. I wasn't expecting her to have a love interest in this remake. Also, Gong Li as the witch who turns to a bird. Some people will not like that, but I thought, hey, loosen up. This is more like the Chinese story. You have birds back then. You didn't have a singing, talking dragon back then, but Gong Li, I thought she did a great job. And I also thought Jet Li 
finally seeing him come out of retirement again to play the, in this movie. He does a great job here. There were a few moments with him where where I felt like he was kind of kind of kind of a little rocky, but he was 100% great for the most part, despite that. But the cast in this movie is well done. The actress who plays the sister is great. Everyone in here is great. Also, the musical score by Harry Gregson Williams. This score is really great. I love the love the musical score here. It's phenomenal. It's fantastic. It does capture the spirit and essence of a Chinese war epic here. And and I, you do have have some a little bit hints of reflection and 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 another song from the original into the score which is played during during the soundtrack in the movie but it was it was good fan service it wasn't the fan service that killed you inside also Christina Aguilera does come back to do a new a new version one called loyal brave and true and I gotta say the, her vocals are still great Christina Aguilera is definitely one of my favorite singers and it was nice that they got her back to do the reflection song and Loyal Brave Jew because nobody else can do reflection just as good as her. But the score and the sound mixing was really great. Also the technical aspects of the, the cinematography and production design. This is a well designed movie and a well shot film. There is color despite the movie having the tone that it has. It's a lot of color and the scenes in nighttime, the scenes with Mulan, her family, and the scenes where she's out on the battlefield. All of that is very well done. There is some, there is some slow motion and some steady cam shots and some crazy editing in the action scenes, but it wasn't over. It wasn't overly jarring. It, I liked it. It reminds me a lot of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dra Dragon, and some other great wire work. And the wire work in this movie is great. You can tell it points it is wire work, but the wire work at times it was very very good i love the choreography in this movie well choreographed action scenes here also i have to say this movie it had a heart to it some people say this movie has no heart to it i disagree there is a heart in this movie it still represents that message of strong female empowerment without beating you over the head and saying they they never once say that she is a woman it doesn't beat you over the head. It doesn't make men look bad. There's no agendas in this movie, which that was another thing I was very happy with because usually with a female power movie, you would be having against agendas, and there weren't any agendas in the Star Wars sequel trilogy for me personally. And there's not any gender, any agendas here. So this movie it had the female empowerment touch to it. And it had the heart to it, and it had the emotion to it. I it, it could have used a little, a little bit more emotion, but the movie it was only an hour hour fifty five minutes, and they didn't want to want to make this over two hours. Which I will say, the movie gets you in and out too, and for that short amount of time, you're sitting there enjoying it, enjoying it. It's fast paced. It does. It put it puts you. The action does put you where you need to be, and for a two hundred million dollar budget, the money is well spent. And I can easily tell this show went to theaters because if this was went to theaters, this movie it would have made mo his money back, despite the mixed reactions from audiences. And I can see why some people won't like it because of some of the changes they made, because it's not like the cartoon. But again, this is meant to be a, be based around the old Chinese stories. So if you take that into account, while you might not like it or you might enjoy it, you'll be able to understand what the, what the filmmakers were trying to do here. Now I do have a bit of bones to pick before I get into this one last positive. I will say this last positive, I did like the villains. I liked their motivation more. I did like, like the depth that they get to them. Then they made it interesting. Mainly Gong Lee's character. I like her character, and plus, Dirt Mulan. She does get taken down here, so she does 
have vulnerability to her. So she doesn't do everything. So not very much appreciated that aspect. Now as far as my issues with the movie, I only have two I only have one issue and I will say that I do wish that there that there was a bit more we could have gotten a lot more from the from the other characters, a bit more development towards them. They're not bad or anything. You get enough with them, but I feel like you could have added some more characterization to some of the some of the newer characters here. I enjoyed a lot of these newer characters. I just wanted a little bit more depth out of them. But sometimes actions does speak before it, so that I can kind of let go. Also, I do feel like while the script is good, there was a few moments of dialogue that was a little bit, you know, a bit, bit cliche, cliche, just a little bit, not a lot. And I will say that because I do feel like this movie has at least too many writers. You only needed the two writers, Rick Jaffa and Amanda Silver, to write this. Because it does, because the movie's still very good. The script is still very good. It's just that at some points there is some questionable dialogue there. But other than that, I still very much thought that they, that it was still a very, very good movie that did respect its source material while taking it in a new direction. The tone never bothered me here. This is, this is, again, this is meant to be based on the old Chinese folklore, and I very much appreciated that aspect. So, with that being said, before I get into my final thoughts, be sure to hit, follow me on all my social media links in the description box down below. Comment down below what you guys think of Mulan 2020. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Are you going to pay $30? Are you going to wait till December? Whatever the case may be. Did you, did this do justice to to the old Chinese story? Did you like it as a fan of the 98 film? Whatever. Let's comment it comment down below and please be civil in the comments. We can all we can you you can hate the movie. That's fine, but please be civil in the comments. Everyone who comments because this is a movie that is going to be pretty divisive. Some people will love it, some people will be in the middle, some people will hate it. Or some people will just think it's alright. I'm in the love it camp. Overall, Mulan 2020, I was very surprised. I was very happy that this wasn't a shot for shot remake. It honored its source material while honoring the original classic. Lu Yafei is great as this character. I love the story. I still love the messages that it carried over from its original counterpart. The action is very well choreographed. Great costume and production design. You have a very interesting villain. I will say while there is some dialogue, a little bit of dialogue here that is a little cliche, and while I do feel like we could use a lot more character moments with some of these newer characters, I still very much loved almost everything about Mulan 2020. Definitely one of the better live action Disney remakes. Definitely one of the better surprises of 2020 for sure. And for sure, Mulan will get an epitastic. So that was my review of Mulan 2020. What did you guys think of it in the comment section down below? Stick around for a Mulan ranking, which I will be ranking all three Mulan movies from the worst to the best as well as my Nolan ranking and more videos on the way very soon. I do have reviews for Ava coming, my late review of the New Mutants, and I'll see you guys later. You guys keep it cool and join the Epitaphs.